Hello YouTubers and welcome to today's video. Recently my wife and I both purchased e-bikes and subsequently we now need a trailer hitch and a bike rack. When I went looking for a bike rack I was looking for something foldable, something with some versatility, some security and also something with some sturdiness as both of our e-bikes combined even without the batteries weigh in at about 110 to 15 pounds. Today I'll unbox this model, assemble it, show you some of the features that it has and tell you some of my pros and cons, so stick around. This is the bike rack I chose and I ordered it through Amazon. It was delivered in six days. It can be a bit frustrating creating YouTube videos outside since I don't have any control over the wind, rain, falling leaves, and external noise. That said, I decided to try and assemble this bicycle rack in my bedroom, in my bedroom shoes. Although this box is not extremely heavy, it has no handles and is awkward. I imagine like trying to wrestle a seal, if you're into such. Opening the top of the box reveals the owner's manual. This smaller internal box houses the nuts, bolts, screws, and washers along with some accessories like these. The support brackets for the bike's tires slide onto these horizontal tubes. The hold down lock hooks slide on this vertical tube. Begin by locating and laying out the folding bracket. Slide the shaft of the connecting bracket into the folding bracket like this, aligning the holes as shown. Slide the flat washer onto the bolt. Insert the Allen head bolt into the center hole Attach the flat washer and lock nut. Hold your Allen wrench in place and tighten the lock nut. No torque specs were provided in the owner's manual. As I locate the buckle pin, let me show you how this part works. In the folded up position, the pin goes through this hole and fold it down through this hole.
Position the horizontal tube so that the two holes near the end slide into the connecting bracket. These carriage bolts have flanges on the head which fit into the square hole cutouts in the connecting bracket. Make sure the square flange on the head seats properly before tightening. Since the head locks into the square cutout, you won't need anything but a 17mm wrench or socket to tighten. Again, no torque specs were provided for any of these fittings. As we repeat for the other side, I want you to take note of the horizontal hold down pins between the two halves inside the connecting bracket. You can see how the horizontal tube slides in under these pins. Here is a good video shot of those pins I just mentioned. Again, you want to make sure the heads on the carriage bolts seat flat into the square openings before tightening. The vertical tube slides into the center of the connecting bracket like this. Insert the red handled pin into the bottom center hole. Slide a flat washer onto the Allen head bolt first, then insert the bolt into the tether loop like this. Insert the red handled pin into the top center hole of the connecting bracket and through the vertical tube. On the back side of the connecting bracket, place the other flat washer and lock nut. Holding your Allen wrench in place, tighten the lock nut using a 17mm socket. Whenever you wish to fold up the rack, you'll first want to lower the center tube by removing the red handled pin, then replacing the pin into either this hold when folded to the left or into this hole when folded to the right. The support brackets and hooks are mounted to the tube using six sets of these clamping covers. They are all molded the same. The clamping covers are held in place with these matching carriage bolts and lock knobs. The owner's manual shows a left-right staggered configuration of these support brackets, and we will start by installing a left bracket. But just know that you can install these using any configuration that works for your two bikes. For example, one of your bikes may have a longer wheelbase than the other, predicating a different setup than the one I will show. And that's not a problem. For ease of use, the lock knob should be positioned on top of the clamp which means we must insert the carriage bolt from the bottom. Be sure the head seats properly and install the lock washer first, then the flat washer and knob. Installation of the right support bracket is the same as the left, except we flip the clamping covers around so they face the back side of the horizontal bar like this.
This time I had difficulty inserting the carriage bolt and I had to pick up the unit and while doing so I noted that the bolt head didn't seat properly so I twisted it until it seated. There we go. Now onto the other side of the rack as we speed up the action. Note that although we can slide the rack in either direction, this pin on the end of the tube prevents the rack from sliding off. The two lock hooks mount to the center tube in the same fashion as the racks did to the horizontal tubes. Observe. One hook is installed facing forwards and one facing backwards. It doesn't matter which one is on top or bottom or which hook faces which direction. It's all interchangeable. Again, there is a pin on this end of the tube as well, which prevents the hooks from sliding off. During assembly, this folding rack was shown folded in what would be the up position. Watch as I demonstrate how the rack would appear folded down in preparation for loading your bikes. To prepare your bike rack to fold up out of the way, first pull the red handled pin and fold the center tube down in either direction. Note that neither lock hook has to be first removed for this operation. You may be wondering what holds the red handled pin in place. It's this small ball bearing near the tip. This ball bearing is compression fitted with a spring underneath. In conclusion, to mount the bike rack, slide the shaft of the folding bracket into your trailer hitch receiver. You can order this rack in two different sizes, but take note of the lighter load capacity if you need to go with a smaller shaft. I really like what I saw in this model, and I hope that you did too. They are not a sponsor, but uh, if you're looking for a bike rack that is less than half the price of comparable models, that is sturdy and will be able to support one or two e-bikes, you might want to look into this particular model. I'll leave a link down in the description section for you. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. I mounted this rack to my 2 inch receiver like this, but in hindsight due to the awkward shape, it probably would have been easier to mount in the folded up position. Shown here is the locking pin used for securing your bike rack to the trailer hitch. It comes with two unique keys. Removing the dust cover reveals the locking mechanism. Inserting and turning the key causes the center cylinder to pop up and then the lock can be removed from the pin. Insert the pin through the receiver and through the hole in the folding bracket shaft. Slide on the lock, then press down the center cylinder. You don't need the key inserted for this part. Finish by replacing the dust cover. Next, position the anti-wobble or stabilization plate like this. Grab the U-shaped fastener, wrap it around the bike rack shaft and down through the plate. On either side of the threads, first mount the associated lock washer, the flat washer, and nut.
At this point, to ensure the U-shaped fastener and plate stay square to the hitch, I alternate the tightening of the nuts. This stabilization plate for me was one of the selling points of this rack. Now that the rack is mounted to the vehicle, to fold it up I begin by pulling the red handle pin, folding down the center tube and replacing the pin. The buckle pin is unlatched and more easily removed if you take a bit of weight off the rack. I think a nice feature would have been to include some warning stickers to attach here for drivers who tailgate and I may go ahead and buy some and apply them. This rack also has a tilt feature for use if you wanted to lower the tailgate on a truck or on an SUV without having to unload the bikes. One feature the bike racks have that are three times the price of mine is the fold out ramp. I made my own ramp using a scrap piece of 2x4 and an old drapery rod hanger with sturdy hooks that I found laying around my basement. I marked and drilled some starter holes for a couple of lag bolts and fastened the hanger in place. This ramp can easily fit into the back of my truck for transport, but may be too long for your car or SUV. If you have an SUV, however, your ramp won't need to be as long as mine because the distance off the ground won't be as high as a truck, so your ramp could be shorter and transportable. This is my first attempt using this ramp. Note that it is now a one-person job without lifting or straining. I had not yet adjusted the support brackets for this bike, so at this point you can see the front tire is seated properly while the rear tire rests on top of the support bracket rather than inside it. Loosening and sliding the front bracket forward seats the rear tire properly. Before we leave the topic of ramps, note that later on I screwed a 1x1 one one scrap to the bottom of the ramp because rolling the bike up the ramp caused the 2x4 to want to tilt sideways. This brace prevents that from happening. Most rack manufacturers require e-bike owners with a step-through design like ours to purchase a crossbar for their hold-down mechanism. This bar can cost from $30 to $70 per bike, but I'm happy to report that this lock hook holds the bike perfectly in place. One item included in this kit that I'm not thrilled with is these hook and loop fasteners that are supposed to hold down the wheels. Granted, the lock hook bears the brunt of securing the bike, but for the good these do, I consider them almost ornamental. You might want to add straps or bungee cords. Another item that disappointed me was this spring-loaded ball bearing which flew out of the red-handled pin seemingly about the second time I used it. It went flying across my driveway, never to be found again. Rather than contact the manufacturer for a replacement, I decided an improvement would be to finish drilling out the hole like this and insert an R-clip or cotter pin. As it turns out, I like my idea better anyways. If you're worried about losing this clip, you could put it on a tether, but I think it'll be just fine as is. If you view the manufacturer video, you will see this 9-foot strap used to tie the two bikes together and not used to secure the bikes to the rack. I'm sure the thinking is that the bikes tied together provide more resistance to movement than apart. The teeth on the spring buckle clip holds the canvas strap securely. Now I ended up with lots of excess, so I just looped it around the support bracket and back up top to tie to itself. A recent long distance trip showed this method to be successful. So here we see some parting shots of the tires of my bike secured with the ornamental hook and loop fasteners, a shot of the distance between the two bikes, and the distance between the innermost bike and the vehicle. I opted to use bubble wrap to further protect the paint on my wife's bike and on my own bike with its step through design. 
Note on my bike, I secured the hook over a welded port designed to plug in a second battery and it works great. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing to my channel as this project is complete.